in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is indeed a good thing for us to gather together in this fashion. And we give God thanks for his goodness and for his mercy. I'm gonna, I have adopted the theme from the Petersfield High School. Enrich me with knowledge today. Resilient I will be. And I must confess that when I first saw the theme, I, I said to myself, well, this doesn't make no sense, <laughs> somewhat. But when I look at the word resilient, I think that is what really speaks life to the first statement of the theme. Enrich me with knowledge today. Resilient I will be tomorrow. If you have your Bible on your phone, turn with me to Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. It is called the book of wisdom. It is one that was designed to make one wise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in our midst. We thank you, Lord, that you still see it fit to tabernacle with us. Lord, we in our own self is limited. But God, the scripture remind us that we can do all things through Christ who gives strength. So Lord, if any of us is weak, we ask God that Christ will be made strong within us. If any of us is discouraged and confused, that Christ will give us peace and resilience. We thank you that we have the opportunity that your word can be explained to us audible. In some nation, the Bible is an abomination. It cannot be read. It cannot be interpreted because of the kind of condition that exists. Help us not to take this opportunity for granted, but to be attentive to your word and apply it to our heart as we travel in this land. Bless your people. I ask your God that you will anoint me one more time to give your word with clarity and power that as your people are edified, you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise be to God. I want to welcome those who came in after the welcome. I want you to know that it's a blessing to have you in our midst. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for your presence. We give God thanks for allowing you to be here with us. If you find Proverbs chapter 1, I just want to add some, some meat to Isaiah chapter 4. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to proceed the words of understanding. Verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fool despise wisdom and instruction. So it is only fear for me to start off this morning exaltation and this theme that in order for us to get true knowledge is for us to fear God. Amen? And fear of God is not to be afraid in sense that you dread to go into his presence. But this fear is reverence. In other words, it's is not a sense. It is respecting and understanding that there is a supreme being that governs the earth. Amen? The world did not came because of a result of a big bang. There is a man upstairs that is in that is in charge of the earth that says let there be and it was 
And I want us to understand that you don't have to be um, very bright to know that there is a God. The word of God says even the tree testify that there is a supreme being. If you look at the ocean, even the ocean testify that there is a God. There is a part in Job that says he commands the ocean to come this far and no further. So even the sea and the stars and the moon and the sun understand, have the knowledge that there is a supreme being. And in order for us to be enriched with knowledge, we must acknowledge that there is a God. And we cannot allow this world to dismiss that reality. Because sometimes we dismiss the very presence of God because of our experiences. You know, many persons said there cannot be a God. When I look at uh, yesterday, I took the area at uh, 12, 12 days old child. I said, if I was strong in my faith, if I would say to myself, God, oh, why would you allow the mother to go through nine months of carrying this child? And when the child actually came into existence, the child died. And if you are not careful, situation will want you to dismiss the reality that there is a God. If you're not careful, your personal challenges and issues and ambition will cause you not to pursue after God. But I'm here to remind the church that there is a God, whether you love him or not, whether you acknowledge him or not, you are dependent on him. Enrich me with knowledge today. Resilient I will be tomorrow. So hear what Solomon says. He says, the reason I am writing the book of Proverbs is for you to understand that there is a God. I want you to know that he exists and he is real. And the first way you can tap into him is that you must fear him. You must give him the respect that is due unto him. Uh, that is why the psalmist says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So when I open up my mouth to give God praise, it is an act of acknowledgement that there is a God and the breath that I'm breathing belongs to him. He is the reason for my existence. And if I do that daily, it brings enrichment to my life. Yeah. Come on church, talk to me. You know, it is easy for us to worship man and to applaud men. And with men, there is failure and disappointment. Hallelujah. But I heard David says, I was young. And now I am old. I have never seen those who trust God is disappointed by him. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. David says, I when you fear God, when you acknowledge God, He sustains you in every situation. Yeah. Difficult times will come, but you will be sustained. Yeah. Disappointments will come, but you will be sustained. You will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and you will not die because the presence of the Lord is the one who leads. Come on, somebody. I want the church to talk to me because the word of God says, So trust in chariot. Some trust in horses. Oh God, some trust even in their bank account in vanity. But David says, I will trust in the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And if you run into it, you are saved. And that is why the word enrich is important. Because when you're enrich, hallelujah, you flourish. When you're enriched, you look good. People ever ask you, how you have gone through, where you have gone through, and still look so good? Because I acknowledge God. Because I have a fear of the Almighty God. I, I don't pass through the storms of life looking the way I look because my diet is according to science. But I look the way I look because sometimes when you're going through problems, food has no taste. Oh, brother, King and KFC, chicken not taste good.
acknowledging God. There is power in acknowledging God. There is provisions in acknowledging God. It is so sad that we live in a generation that think because we have a phone that can tell a location in America, we no longer need God. We want to live a self-sustained life without acknowledging that there is a true and living God. Let me get to the meat of the matter. When you acknowledge God, it is not just a mental state. It becomes an attitude and behavior. God in Hosea chapter 4 had a problem with Israel. They had a form of godliness, but they denied God with their attitude. Anytime the word Israel shows up, it automatically tells you what they're connected to or who they're connected to. So can I say, just having a knowledge of God is not sufficient. But we must demonstrate that knowledge in attitude, values, and behaviors. Can I talk to somebody? And this is where the church gets quiet. Because it is easy to tell God thanks for giving me food. But can you give God thanks when there is no food? And the source that the food is provided through, it is not godly, so you refuse to take it. Can you be going through your difficult times, but the persons that are sent to bless you, you will not receive the blessings because the hands of those blessings is not lined up to good morals and behavior. Can I talk to somebody? I believe this is where Peter Spee wants to go. That if you know God, you don't have to bow to the negative elements. If you know God, you don't have to bow to the negative systems. Because you know God, regardless of what you encounter, you will still stand firm. Because you understand that your source is not from God. Can I tell somebody, it is easy to praise God when you have a new pair of shoes. But can you come to church and kneel before the altar when your shoes he is bowed, is dropping off and still say, God, I'm not going to bow to me to go to. It is difficult. You don't have to shout. It's all right. Praise be to God. We have a system that has been promoted. Get rich quick or die trying. Don't you? That's the type of system we have. Take it from somebody else to live lavish. Deprive somebody else of their, of their honest earning through deceit and deception. And then I hear scammers and bless me your people are scared when I use the name of God. It is not strange to acknowledge God, but it is your attitude and action that this French here that you are truly acknowledging God. Amen. Talk to me somebody. Amen. So hear what God says to the prophet Hosea. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of God. God has a problem with you. Hallelujah. He said the problem that God has with you, there is no truth and there is no mercy and there is no knowledge of God in the land. Ah, hallelujah. It is funny that when we promote Jamaica, we always say Jamaica no problem. And we always say one love. But our murder rate is so high. So are we really demonstrating what we say? Hallelujah. Follow me, follow me. I want you to follow me in your Bibles. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the moral actions we demonstrate. So God said, this is the argument I have against you. You have no truth. You have no mercy. No acknowledging or acknowledge God in the land. The actions are you swear, you lie, you kill, you steal, you commit adultery. They break out and blood touch it. Blood. Praise the Lord. This is a serious accusation. 
This is God himself speaking to his people that is supposed to be a set apart people. Hear what God says. As a result of that, things get hard. You know when there is no fear of God in the land, things get hard? When there is no fear of God in the land, things that should be producing no longer produce. Everything get more difficult because man must understand that everything that is sustained in the earth is a result of God. Can, can, can I preach on? Let me just apologize to your feeling. There are some things that we are encountering that we should not be encountering. Because, and it's not because God wants it to hard, it's because of the condition of man's heart. Can I talk to somebody? The word of God tells me that it is his will for us to be blessed and be blessed in abundance. It is God's will for us to have the good of the land to enjoy. But any time man actions go against God's knowledge and God's will, it creates chaos. Our schools are in chaos. Our community are in chaos because back in the days when I used to go to school, the same shoes we were wearing at school, you have to wear in that church. And it was not optional. You couldn't stay at home with tablet and the pair of flat screen TV and the pair of super food. It was mandatory for children to go to Sunday school. Do we have that form of knowledge anymore? So now we have a nation where a six-year-old can pull a trigger because the tablet is left to raise that child. And we call them that, we say that they're smart because they can repeat what Dora said. But behind Dora, there are other things that we are engaging in. Can I talk to somebody? Hallelujah. Can I talk to somebody? We have to know God so we can secure the future. Our schools are the way it is because our parents, hallelujah, are not godly as they should. I understand. True heart. I learned something about you. True, true heart. And when you're confronted with truth, you have to see a silent so you can introspect and make changes. And this is what God is telling Israel. Things are what it is. This generation is carrying some yokes that they shouldn't have been carrying because the generation before failed. And I learned something about sin. It does not go if not repented. I learned something about actions. You can't do something and don't expect a reaction. To every action, there is a reaction. And here God telling Messiah, I want to bless Israel, but Israel has to come back to me and their actions have to demonstrate it. You can't just want God to bless you and keep you in a good health. And you never read the Bible. You don't take time to meditate. Hear what David says. The man who feared God, the man who acknowledged God, meditate in God's word day and night. Then David says, that man becomes like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. What David says, not one of his leaves shall we know. But whatsoever he do it shall prosper. That is where true prosperity lies. When man meditates in God's word. When the word of God becomes a pillow for your life. Hallelujah. And don't be impressed because people drive expensive vehicles. We call them prosperous. The devil gives the devil gives gift to them. The devil gives Gift. And we are in now when we're when we're in a time where we're impressed by what people have on social media. And we want it, we want it to. But the devil give gifts. Praise the Lord. And it is not always greener on the other side. Let me run to verse 6. Hear what verse 6 says. My people are being, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected 
knowledge, I also reject thee. So we need to have a clear understanding of what knowledge is. We have to have a clear understanding of what this knowledge is. We, remember, we, we, we know by virtue of the word that when Israel came out of bondage, God gave them laws and commandment. He said to Joshua, Joshua, I'm about to give you a position to lead my people Israel. But this is what I want you to do, Joshua. You see my words? I love it to abide in your heart. Joshua, the only way you can have true success is to allow my word not to depart from your heart. He says, anywhere you put your feet, Joshua, it is yours. Why? Because you honor my words and obey my words. So true knowledge comes from God. Not from the University of the West Indies. But the true foundation of knowledge comes from the word of the Lord. That is why David says, thy word have I hid. Yet he was a psalmist, he was very intelligent. But he said, Lord, it is thy word that has made me wise in every other areas of my life. So he said to, to Joshua, Joshua, I'm going to give you great prosperity. I'm going to allow you to face your enemies and become victorious. But all it is required for you to do is to abide in my word. Don't look to the east, don't look to the west. I want you to look to me in all things. So knowledge is total dependence on God. Come on, somebody. You're not really knowledgeable until you totally depend on God and understand the word of the living God. Praise the Lord. I look at the word resilient. It means to be able to stand in difficult times or you easily recover. When you're going through difficulties, you're able to recover easily. I want us to think of any biblical character that we can think of, whether it be Joshua, Moses, Gideon, Mary, Elizabeth, any biblical character who had a fear of God, whose situation destroyed them. They were always victorious. The word of God says, Daniel was in a lion's den. The lion responsibility was to consume anything that was thrown in their cage. But Daniel had a wealth of knowledge in God. Daniel knew that a man who depends upon God, it doesn't matter how difficult the situation is, they will bounce back. Yeah. Oh, can I tell somebody? That's why you can't keep a person down who fear God and love and reverend God. They will go through it, but they'll come out as fine gold. Somebody who make God their strength and confident will never have a bad deal because of the because the word of God can give victory to those who acknowledge him. That is why when God read the Lord said, he was screaming and bawling for help and mercy. When David faced Goliath, David was not discouraged by how Goliath looks. That's what resilience does. When you have a knowledge of God, it gives you the authority to look at your problem and say to it, you will not last. When you have a knowledge of God, you look at situation and say situation, you will not cause me to eat out of the garbage bin. Can I talk to somebody? When you have a knowledge of God, you have the resilience to say, you come to kill me, but I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the word of the Lord. It gives you the ability to bounce back. Say to your neighbor, you better know God so you can bounce back. Oh, you know how many persons die? 
fucking room. But when you work hard for your vehicle, you stick up in your vehicle. And you are driving now, you get to never talk to them. Because you understand the sweat and the blood that you know God, that cause you. So you realize anything that God gives you, he does not have any struggle. Turn it on and turn it off with ease. Then I look behind of you. Because when you have the knowledge of God, he gives you the health to enjoy it. And the peace of mind to enjoy it. Oh, hallelujah. Hear what Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. He says, I don't want you to leave. Solomon, you know, the wisest man I tell you, but give us something to give us advantage. He said, don't leave. And you won't understand it. It is dangerous to depend on yourself to get you through the situation. He said, this is what you need to do. Acknowledge him and what he will do. He will direct the path. And when, 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 when Solomon says this, he said, what about our Lord? Because if you have the knowledge that God is the Alpha, and the labor, the beginning and the end. Simply mean anything that you and I go through, God knows about it before us go through it. Amen. So Solomon said that God has advantage in time. He has advantage for the future. That when he directs you, he knows exactly where he will lead you. Amen. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct the path. Praise the Lord. Enrich me with knowledge. I'm resilient. Oh, I will be tomorrow. Hear what Proverbs, hear what Psalms 19 verse 20, verse 2 says. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. Solomon said, it, uh, David says, the elements around me gives me knowledge. So even in my observation of nature, I realize that God speaks. I used to be very, and this is me personally, I used to be very hasty. I used to have a spirit. I want to get it now. And last year, in 2021, when we were putting this structure together, God had to correct that about me. And I was saying to God, God, the pandemic come, and I was, I was just, I was just, you know, like, we shall probably start complaining to God. You are complaining. I tell God, say, God, the facts are good, this, this should not happen. You ever feel that way? But God, we see every money. This should not done by now. I'm work hard. This should not done by And God said to me, I want you to calm your spirit. Because when you have a knowledge of God, you must understand if he delays you, it is for better. God said, I don't do anything in rush because I am a finisher. And anytime I finish anything that I start, it must catch the eyes of others. It must be a masterpiece. So you being impatient is messing up the display. Be still and know that I am God. And while you are waiting, ask for the strength to wait. Because when you trust God and when you fear God, nothing really can go wrong. If he delays you, it's for better. Because sometimes in our rush, we miss details. Sometimes in our own rush, we miss certain things that is necessary for the thing to be a masterpiece. Said so your neighbor, no rush. Just get to know him. Oh God. Can I talk to somebody? No rush. No, just in a no rush. God have to take, God have to teach me personally. Say so age doesn't matter. But God, me at this age, and God me at that age. And he said, like, Sherry, when it comes down to me, age doesn't matter. Because one day for you is a thousand years to me. What you consider a thousand years is a day to me. What you consider day is an hour to me. So you have to acknowledge that you're dealing with a God who can allow things to move at a faster rate to accomplish his will. Oh 
Come on, neighbor. Say to your neighbor, no rush, God. <laughs> neighbor, no rush him. Just, 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 just trust him. Hear what David says. Teach me knowledge and good judgment. For I trust your commands. Teach me knowledge and good judgment. For I trust your command. Who remember when Job lost everything? You think I was saying to somebody, Job did not speak so boldly because he was hurting. He spoke the way he did because he trusts God. The Lord give it, the Lord take. You have to have a relationship with that. Because if you read the book of Job, as one servant was telling Job, his children die. Another one was telling you lose all your cattle. Job got the message of his demise in one day. One day in one breath. As one servant was reporting the situation, another servant was reporting the situation. But hear what Job said. Based on my knowledge of God, if he gives it, he can take it away. Based on my relationship with God, I'm going to sit and wait until my change comes. Oh, can I talk? And that is how you get resilient. You cannot get resilient. You cannot have it without having a knowledge and trust in God. So you're so happy you should be crying. The Lord wipe away all my tears. How will you sleep at night? He gives his beloved beautiful rest. So how will you not stress out? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. It takes knowledge to have that level of resilience in the time of trouble. How you so righteous? So say, you too righteous. You know, God, you don't know. But when you understand that God is your cushion, you don't have nothing to worry about because in reality, we really can change the reality. If it happens, what can I do to change it? I have to trust God to take me through it. Can I say it again? For this month, take the time out to know God deeper. Take the time out. And when the problems of life comes, find a word. Sometimes we could have called everybody if you complain. You know who we saw the same word? But before we do that, find a word. Because some people are going to love to hurt us. They need to hurt us. Because you take them to a season that they don't deserve to come in. Do you know that? Some people that left us, that leave us, if we had taken them in a certain season, they wouldn't deserve the blessing that comes with that season. So before God allowed them to come with us, God revealed their hearts to us. Can I talk to somebody? And we are there crying and asking God, why? we should say, God, thank you for relieving me of that burden. Because some people cannot go into the season because they don't deserve what God is about to do for you. Because their heart does not reflect truth and love. So the next time, just in case you're going through something and you don't have the strength to go through it, go to the Word. Go to the Word. You stop crying. Something that don't cry anymore. Lord, if you take it, yes. it's for a reason. Yes. Because some things that we embrace are poison. You know that? Yes. And you gotta have to, sometimes God says, okay, because I am God and I know what the future holds, I have to break you to save you. Yes. I have to hurt you to release you. Yes. Because sometimes we put ourselves in captivity. And God said, you can't free yourself. So let me break you to save you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Enrich me with knowledge today. Lord, begin to examine my circle. Let me know if I need to be at this place at this time. Let me know if I need to shift my associations so better opportunities can come to me. Lord, do I need to be focusing on this rather than this? Come on, acknowledge you today. 
And I can, I, I can guarantee you that you will not regret it. You know what, God, and I'm going to end on this note. God said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you, but you must offer your one son. Unless you are able to entrust your son into my hand, you are not worthy to receive the blessing. Do you know when God really blessed Abraham? Is when Abraham was willing to kill Isaac. Then God said, no, I can bless you. Because you have the knowledge, if I take your son, you can give it back. Now bless him, I will bless you. And anyone who curse you, I will curse them. When you have a knowledge of God, you don't bow to situations. Situation bows to you. When you have a knowledge of God, nothing holds you in captivity. You are liberated in spite of what? Is happening. Can I ask of us to raise our hands and make a declaration? This is a personal message. The pandemic has taught us that there are some things that we go through, we have to go through it alone. There are some experiences that are personal. It can't include mother or father, sister or brother. It has to be between me and my God. Lift your hand. Think about something that has been holding you and causing you to be a victim. And tell God, I'm asking you for the knowledge today to resist it for my tomorrow. Father, as we raise our hands to you, we recognize that it is our duty to fear you. It is man's duty to acknowledge you. For every human that abides in the earth, you are the architect with the blueprint of our lives. Help us not to take that for granted that all that we are in need of is in you. Help us, oh God, not to be so early consumed that we forget about your presence and leadership. Lord, as we raise our hands, all of us have our own challenges and circumstances. We ask of you, oh God, to give us the knowledge so we are able to resist anything that may come at us. Oh God, we are able to recover speedily anything that was meant to destroy us. Lord, renew our minds, renew our thoughts, and cause us to be a better version of ourselves tomorrow than what we were today. We desire to grow. We desire to improve our lives, God, in every area. But in reality, we cannot do it outside of you. Will you empower us? Will you, oh God, help us to trust you and to follow after you?